lawyers, has a client ever completely ignored your advice and turned out to be right? I was a freshly minted lawyer and had been assigned to represent a young man in juvenile court charged with possession and transportation of the special herb back in the days when such activity was a felony offense. Although tried as a juvenile he could face severe penalties, time in juvenile hall, placement in a group home, removal from his family. He also had the near-perfect grounds for a motion to suppress the evidence, the first such motion I'd come across in real life. It was a near certainty to win the case for us on a technicality, it was a bad detention and search and the evidence would have been barred from the case. Without it the case had no legal grounds upon which to proceed and the charges would have to be dismissed. I took great pains to explain this to my client, Billy. He asked me what would happen if the motion were not run. I told him his conviction on the charge was an absolute certainty and all I had described above would probably happen. He was by all accounts, including his own mother's, something of an incorrigible young man, an academic truant, with many close scrapes with law enforcement, and more. And I knew it highly likely that he'd be removed from his mother's custody and become a dependent slash ward of the court and could remain on probation until he reached his majority. I also knew that were he to reoffend, his future treatment would only get more harsh. Once in the system, he'd be ridden hard and I didn't think he'd want or endure that well. He asked me if he could prevent me from filing the motion to suppress. Me, well, yes, but if we don't there's nothing to prevent your being found guilty and there's not much I can do to prevent your removal from your mother's custody. You'll totally be at the mercy of the court and probation. We might as well waive trial and go straight to sentencing. Billy, that's what I want to do. I don't want a trial. I'll plead guilty. Me, but Billy. We can win this case and there's nothing they can do to you if you get the dope suppressed. Billy, you're my PD, right? And you said I have the absolute right to go to trial or not right? I want to plead guilty. No trial. I did as he ordered and as expected the court did impose custody time in the hall and ordered that he serve additional time in a group home, sort of a parole home, for juveniles. At his sentencing he shook my hand and thanked me for my efforts on his behalf. About a year and a half later I was out and about when a young couple walked up to me. The young man called me by name. I've never been particularly comfortable with anyone calling me formally except in a professional venue. I looked at him but didn't recognize him or the young lady affectionately draped across his arm. Mr. Lee, it's me, Billy. Billy? How are you? Doing great, sir. Just saw you and wanted to thank you for everything you did for me. But Billy, you told me not to fight your case and you wound up on probation and everything else. That's true but it also got me away from my mother and older brother who were just screwing up my life. I never told you how much of my stuff back then was a result of the way I was being treated at home and all the crap around me. I'm not saying what I did was right, but I needed to get away. After I got out on probation and into the group home, I got my act together, graduated high school, and now I've got an apprenticeship as a union meat cutter, and I'm making good money, and I have a lovely girlfriend. And you helped make it all happen. No Billy, I was just being a know-it-all lawyer and apparently not anywhere near as smart as you. Seems you're the one who made the right call. 